Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs and today I'm going to show you how to build this one chunk wizard's tower. Despite the small footprint, it's got tons of room inside for everything from enchanting to storage to brewing and living quarters, and as always it fits inside a single chunk of 16 by 16 blocks. Let's get into it. Start one block from the edges of your chunk and build a circle out of polished andesite, three blocks straight and then a corner block, so you've got a circle five blocks across the middle. Leave this corner open for an entrance. Fill in the inside circle with walls made of bone blocks, five blocks tall, and then carve out this opening and add a spruce double door on the corner. Replace the central ring of this wall with pillar or chiseled quartz, and build a ladder on one of the walls opposite the door. On the outside corners, build a pillar starting with a spruce slab, a log, chiseled stone, three more logs, and a slab. Put one of these on each corner, and then in the center of each wall with stairs instead of slabs, and with the top part five blocks tall instead of three. Add inverted stone brick stairs either side of the chiseled stone blocks, then fill in the row behind that with bone blocks. We're going to add windows, made of two cobblestone stairs and a trap door, on top of each inverted stone brick stair. Inside the tower, lay down some slabs at the top of these bone blocks to start the next floor, leaving a glowstone block in the centre to light the rooms above and below. This can be concealed from the side and below with trap doors, but we'll build bookshelves around the walls here for a full enchanting setup. An enchanting table in the middle will hide the glowstone block but still lets light through, and we'll add some chests here for storing books, tools and lapis. Extend the ladder up the inside of this pillar, then create a ceiling for the enchanting room with more oak slabs. Once that's done, fill in the gaps around the outer walls with bone blocks. As before, we'll make these five blocks high and swap out the middle row for pillar or chiseled quartz. Next, we'll ring the topmost blocks with more polished andesite, and then take out the bone blocks behind them and place trapdoors in the gaps on each of these four walls. Add two cobblestone walls to each outside corner of the andesite ring and extend oak fences down from those. On top of the cobblestone walls, we'll create corner windows for the next floor up, similar to what we did in the witch hut design, placing two stairs on either side so there's a small window with glass blocks behind supported by stone slabs. Build one of these on each corner. Once that's done, use five stair blocks to create archways over the two sides where you want to add the extra turrets. You can choose any side and even add all four if you like, but in this case I'm building them on the sides that allow me to stay within a 16x16 16 16 boundary. On the sides which don't have towers, simply fill in the wall with blocks, leaving a gap for two high windows with fences or glass panes. This last section of the tower supports the roof, and once again it's made out of bone blocks in this kind of alternating shape. Fill that in on each side of the tower, and add a spruce fence to the gaps in the middle, then add trapdoors to the corners, and slabs on top of each corner. Now we'll move on to the turrets, which extend from the main tower on arms made from birch stairs, iron bars on top of those, spruce logs on top of that, and finally topped off with oak fences. Build four birch stairs outward and upward, with the other materials on top, like so, and fill in the gap with cobblestone stairs alongside the iron bars. Hang oak fences underneath the cobble stairs like this, to make it look like a structural support. Start the body of the turrets by placing a 3x3 with cobble and stone slabs on the corners, filling the rest with a mixture of other stone materials. Add stone brick and cobble stairs on the underside of those blocks, and then bring a chiseled stone brick and a cobblestone wall downwards so it comes to a point. Back on top, start a wall one block out using cobblestone, cracked stone brick and inverted cobble stairs. We're going to turn this tower into a potions lab, so dig out a block in the centre to place a water source, add colourful blocks to the corners, then add a single glass pane in the middle, unconnected to anything, so you can walk on it but still access the water to fill up potion bottles. Those can be stored in chests, and we'll hide an ender chest below here, covered up with a carpet so the particles are still visible. Using a crafting table or two, connected with a spruce stair, we'll make a bench for the brewing stands to sit on. With that done, bring back your bone blocks and build U-shapes around the outside to make the walls, including two pillars on the tower side, connected by a stone brick stair to form an archway. Fill in the window spaces with oak fences, then hang spruce fences down from the outside corners. To create some height variation, we'll start the next turret arm one block lower, and we'll come out from the main tower by three stairs instead of four, 
but building the rest of it should work exactly the same. The interior can have a carpet, a bed, an extended piston to act as a desk, some bookshelves and a chest for some personal effects. Connect it to the tower with a short walkway and hang fences below as before. Since the arm is shorter it won't look exactly the same, but the asymmetry is part of the appeal. Back in the main tower we'll place some slabs around the edges of the room, lay a 3x3 floor with a glowstone block in the middle and cover what we can with a carpet pattern. You can't have enough bookshelves in this build, wizards have a lot of reading to do, so spam them around the walls and mix them in with oak slabs for a bit of variety. You could also throw in a few paintings here and there, plants in pots, or mob heads if you've got them. For each roof, get two kinds of concrete and concrete powder. I like the combination of blue and dark grey. Remember concrete powder is affected by gravity, so place it somewhere it has a supporting block or hold it up using string. Start with a circle around the outside of the tower, trying to keep the placement of your colours as random as you can. For the next ring, come one block inwards and add another block on top of the central block so the roof slope starts to become more steep. The next section in should be two blocks tall with another central block again, leaving a plus shape on top, and bring it all to a two block high point. The second tower roof is going to use cyan and light grey to match the decor of the living quarters, but it's built exactly the same way. And finally, the main tower roof is pretty much the same, just starting a little larger. While we finish this off, I'll remind you that these tutorials wouldn't be possible without the support I receive from Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash pixelriffs to donate and support future tutorials. Now the roofs are in place, we can add the finishing touches to the interior. Inside the turrets, we'll add a shelf slash alcove up near the ceiling, allowing for additional storage chests, books, ornaments, and even lighting. Remember, chests won't open if there's a full block above them, but a shelker box can open in any direction. Inside the main tower we'll add oak fences to make the tower structure look supported, and dangle them down above the carpeted area in a kind of irregular chandelier. At the base of the tower we'll add some basic decoration to the ground floor using dark oak, bookshelves and oak slabs, and the room above the enchanting setup makes for a great small-scale storage area. Since we have a lot of empty space in the grounds of the tower, we'll think about what the wizard would want to have nearby. A wood stack sounds like a good idea with a few loose logs nearby and the larger ones strapped together using rails and ladders. We can also add some silk touched ore blocks which the wizard is planning to fortune later. Podzol and leaves will look good around the wood pile and the base of the tower. We'll also add a small pond with sugarcane to use in potions and books, and a melon patch for healing potions. Carving a path leading up to the tower makes a lot of sense, and we'll detail that with some coarse dirt, leaves, and cobblestone slabs. Bone mealing the grass will help it feel more natural, and you can even add in some two tall flowers and ferns here and there. Last of all, we'll add some glass panes and blocks above each turret. These could just be ornaments, or they could be nodes of magical energy, in which case dotting some glass panes around the tower roof will give it an extra sparkle. Thanks for watching this one chunk tutorial which was made possible with the support of my wonderful community of patrons. You can head to patreon.com slash to donate and get rewards including membership to my patrons only Minecraft server. A structure file for this build can be downloaded from the link in the description and I'll be publishing a world download this weekend with all 16 of the one chunk builds we've done so far. Don't forget to leave a like on this video and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss future tutorials. My name has been Pixelriffs and I'll see you guys soon. Bye for now.